In my video this time, I'm going to let you see how I fitted a LiftMaster 55A2 garage door opener. The kit comes with all parts needed and included are very, very good instructions. So don't think that this video replaces your instructions. It only demonstrates how the parts were fitted. Hope you enjoy it. This is a kit that's a Chamberlain Liftmaster 5580 KTX and along with that I have the Chamberlain arm which is required for my canopy door. Now just to demonstrate the instructions, this is the instruction book, a uh, section 10 fastening the rail to opener and installing the chain and you'll see in there that all the parts have a number against them, one for the four bolts. Then when you refer it to the other sheet, which is an exploded diagram, you can look for these part numbers on the diagram and you'll know exactly where to fit all the parts. It's very straightforward and very useful. This is the Chamberlain arm which is supplied with the kit I got and it's fitted to the door which then connects to the opener mechanism. This is the inside of the garage door. You can see on the side there are the two guides which the arms slide up and down as it opens. And along the top there's this uh, big coiled spring. The locking mechanism in the centre and on the far side another arm for the opening mechanism. So I've opened the garage door to its highest point. I've placed a, a piece of wood which is two inches thick on the top of the door and then the spirit level on top of that made sure it's level and the point where it, the base of the spirit level comes onto the, the far wall of the garage is where the bracket will have to be mounted. That would be two inches above the highest point of the door when it's open. So I'll make a mark on that point and fit the bracket. Well, that's the plate securely fastened to the beam above the door with four bolts as supplied. The next thing I do is fit the door arm and to do that I've got to remove this locking mechanism which is up at the top here, runs down on the cable and terminates where the key goes through the door. I'm getting ready now to fit the door arm extension and you can see it here and onto that I've put two of the lengthening bars which come with it so that it will brace against the existing garage door which I'll let you see now. Now the, the arm fits in the centre of the door and the top part here should protrude half an inch above the top of the door and the top of the door is just behind this plate. So it'll go in here in the centre which I've plumbed and be fitted that way with the screws provided. That's the arm screw to the door, it's sticking up half an inch above the top of the door there and it's uh, drilled through and put in with the screws which were supplied at the top and the extension arms are fitted down below there with the screws and once again coming down to the bracing bar on the garage door it's screwed in down there. Now to assemble the rail, the rail comes in four pieces like this with three joints and to, to make them fit there's a little sachet of grease which you should put along the inside of the joint rails spread it all over and then the two rails will slip together now with the grease on the joint pieces go to the outside the main rail. It's quite stiff to get in but once you get over the edge they push in quite easily and then just push them in until it comes to the stop which is here. Join all, all pieces of rail together and that will be the, the rail complete. The next thing is to join the chain. So take the chain out of the packet and lay it out in the garage floor. Lay it flat, make sure there are no kinks in it and the uh, end with the wheel should be up here. This is the joining part here and uh, one end of the open chain. So 
one piece goes open the, through this bit here. The link goes through the little hole there. Put on the link cover. The link cover now covers the two pins of the, the chain itself. And then the joining pin, joining spring clip here, pushes in from the far side. Put it over the end first. There is a you know, large hole in part of the link. So put it over that enlarged bit first and then just push it in. You'll probably need to use pliers. It's quite difficult to show this. But the pliers on one of the pins and guide it towards the other pin with the pliers. Like that. And now the chain is joined on here. The next part is to put the chain assembly, this part here, into the rail, this part here. So making sure that you have it facing this way with the open chain and the carrier here, just put the whole end into the into the rail and push it right the way through. Right to the far end of the rail. Now in pre preparation to put the header sleeve, which is this piece here, onto the end of the chain, one of these coach bolts goes underneath and through that little piece there. The next part of assembling the, the header sleeve, that's with the bolt through. This is the header sleeve. Much like before, uh, this um, sleeve will join up on the main rail. The bolt goes through the hole here and the sleeve will tighten onto the there. Thread the spring nut onto the carriage bolt. Make sure that the nut end of the the spring bolt is towards your my left hand, not pointing towards the rail. It just needs to go in a few turns. You don't really need to screw it uh, right the way in. That's the assembly started on the rail, and um, you can use a, a, a wooden mallet to gently tap that hole. Until it hits the stops. Next is to put this outer trolley in from the other end of the rail. Uh, you can see on it there's an arrow pointing in the direction and that arrow should be the direction of your garage door. And that just slips in onto the rail and push it right down to the far end. Once it's down at the far end, which is the door end, just push it over and get it to engage with the trolley. Double clicks. Now with the main unit on the floor turned upside down, the chain spreader, this piece here, goes on to the base piece with two fillet screws. Just in there. That's the chain spreader in place. When you put it on, make sure that the teeth are above the chain spreader. Like this and that the spreader is not on top of the teeth. Now I've taken off the four bolts which are one, two, three and four and lay the rail on top of the power unit and the chain then comes up the side of the chain separator on over the cog and back down again. Now to get some play you'll probably need to slacken off the bolt, the spring bolt at the, the door end of the rail. When that's in place, put the two brackets back on with the four bolts. This is the trolley stop bolt which I've put in. It just goes through the chain guard and with a nut in the back. Just tighten it up to stop the trolley going too far back. This is the end which goes nearest to the door 
and here's the coach bolt which I uh, fastened on earlier and now I'm going to put on the spring bolt here this is back to the door end again and I've screwed on the back on the spring uh, tension nut here uh, it's on finger tight at the moment and now I'm going to set a screwdriver into the slot here and then tighten the bolt end until the washer at the end of the spring jumps against the header plate here that's the spring released onto the end of the header plate but instead of a screwdriver to hold it I had to use a pair of round those pliers but it eventually jumped in that is now the, the best tension on the chain I'm now getting ready to attach the rail to the bracket on the wall so I've uh, positioned the end of the rail against the bracket and uh, the rail coming down and the power unit sitting on some steps just to support it and the rail fits to the bracket this way there are two clevis pins one either side come in and they're secured with pins and join onto the rail that's a unit uh, fixed up at the door end and coming down the other end I've got it sitting up on a pair of steps just to get the position on the ceiling the roof of the garage and I've uh, put a beam in there across here secured it and I'll fasten the power unit up there with the steel bands that's the power unit firmly anchored to the beams now securely fitted in between that one and this one using the fixing straps provided that's most of the small things then that's emergency release cord which attaches up here onto the top of the rail the 40 watt bulb screw in type into the unit the adapter attached to the 13 amp plug that's supplied this is the back of the unit and in here is where the wires go for the wall mounted door opener the wire then runs across the ceiling and down to the illuminated switch on the wall this is a antennae for the opener and closer remote this is the learn button and the learn button would be used to determine the amount of force the unit uses to open and close the door and also to code any new remotes which you may buy this is to show how the Chamberlain arm connects to the real trolley this is the arm that is supplied with the the Chamberlain arm itself and then the black piece comes with the door gear kit which I had to cut to size to fit and it fits on with two nuts and bolts supplied and it pays to try and get one nut bolt at the top one nut and bolt at the bottom to tension that bit better and it fits on the trolley at the top with a clear spin now before you operate the door for a reel it's important to set the open and close limits so with the arm connected to the trolley open the door manually so pull the cord and open the door manually and here on the rail you can see I've put chalk marks and that is where the door was in fully open position so I've put chalk marks where the trolley was and I've done the same on the closed end down near the door now with the arm disconnected you can see here operate the motor and watch where the trolley stops, the inner trolley stops. Now the inner trolley has stopped here. The inner trolley has stopped here. You see here? And just along is where I need it to stop. So what you have to do is measure the distance from this point 
where it did stop and where you want it to stop, which is here. And then up on the opener, there are adjustment screws on the side. So this one here would make the door open further. And for every full turn of this screw in the clockwise direction, the door will open another 3 inches or 75 mil. So measure the distance or the difference and then apply that to the turns that you do here. And exactly the same thing for the bottom. Run the door to the, its closed position with the arm still detached and measure the difference and adjust this screw here for the down position. And again, every full turn of this screw will be 3 inches of travel. Once you've carried out that procedure, reconnect the arm with the cleaver spin up here at the cord and then operate the door and they should stop where required. If they're not precise, you can make final adjustments with these screws. that's stopped on the marks where it gives me the fully open position well where it, the trolley did stop before was down here on these marks here and quite soon we'll do exactly the same thing on the closed position something else you may have to adjust is the force settings and that's the amount of power that the motor uses to drive the door into the open and closed positions. Um, you can adjust this force settings using this button here, but I'm not going to go into that. If you do need it, it's very well detailed in the instructions. Another thing that you must check is the safety reverse system, which would come into play if the door were to come down onto an item. So what I've done here is the door's partially open and I've put a couple of blocks of wood just at the edge of the garage door and I'll now bring the door down. The door should touch something then reverse. As you can see the door has reversed up again which is just making sure that that safety system is operational. So, using the remote, I'll give that a try first. Here we go. Up. Lights on. The door's coming up. There we are. That's ideal. And now we'll try for a down. I'll just try the door for how tight it is for being secure. Yeah, that's, that's okay. And the light's still on the light, I'll probably stay on for about two and a half minutes. Well that's everything fitted. Now from outside we'll just press the remote and watch it all working. There it goes. Now that's a lot easier than standing out in the rain when you come in at night. Just press the button and the door will open. Thanks for watching.